And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all my hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Lord, and our Redeemer. There are always those times when we feel that the troubles we face are getting the best of us. At times like that, it is difficult to consistently maintain our faith and trust in God. When we are in the middle of one of the greatest battles of our lives, it seems as if our emotional and spiritual strength is depleted all too quickly as we strive to go forward in life. Even our physical strength suffers when we're dealing with difficulties day after day because there seems to be no end to it. So there has to be a way to renew our strength from a source beyond ourselves, a source that is never depleted of our in these unprecedented times, we need the Lord more than ever. In these times like we're experiencing right now, our faith and trust in God is crucial and really being put to the test, isn't it? But the strength of God is the only non-exhaustible source of strength that we have. It is easy to live for God and trust Him when all is going well. It is not so easy to do so when the weight of the world is upon our shoulders. This is when too many people, including Christians, may bail out on God as the storms mount against us. So if you're feeling that your strength is turning to weakness all too quickly, look up and put your trust in God once again, for that is the moment when he will act on your behalf. For the Bible says that the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and the saints, those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man or woman may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him or her from them all. Psalm 34, 17-19. David, as recorded in Scripture, said in prayer, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, and am not afraid. What can your mortals do to me? Psalm 56, 3 and 4. At our lowest moments, as soon as we turn to the Lord and cast all our cares upon Him, that's when our trust is built and our relationship with God will really show its true depth. Is it possible that our behavior as Christians must sometimes be shaped by danger or unfavorable circumstances? Have you ever heard about the training method that was given to enlisted men in Florida, in a Florida training camp during World War II? Well, the daily routine and training for these GIs included a run through an obstacle course. On the final stretch of the endurance test, they had to grab a rope and swing across a broad, shallow pool. Well, under the blazing southern sun, the water looked so inviting to the men that they developed a habit of making it only halfway across the pond. But a lieutenant soon caught on to what was happening and made it the new home for a large alligator. So, from that day on, the recruits left the ground 15 feet from the water's edge and fell sprawling in the dust on the other side. Without God allowing challenges to come into our lives, Without God, correct, God's correction and discipline at times, without circumstances that are mind-boggling and very disturbing, 
we would not develop spiritual strength and endurance. We might remain complacent and maybe even a little bit lazy. We must not forget that God has promised us that we will never be tempted or challenged above what we are able to bear, but with every temptation, every trial, every test, every trouble, he will make a way for us to escape and win the victory. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. In the passage from Isaiah 40 that was read this morning, Israel had become discouraged, so God had to remind them of just who he is. God, our creator, is the Lord everlasting, unchanging. He never grows tired or weary, tired of shouldering our burdens or listening to us crying for help. He never turns his ear away. There's no limit to his ability to deliver us and provide for whatever we need. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak whenever we call upon his name. I love that little bit of scripture there. We get weary these days. Weary from the situation we are in. Weary from trying to juggle jobs with COVID protocols and on again, off again rules and regulations. Weary of trying to do church services online. Weary of dealing with the learning curves that we have had to navigate in order to keep church services going. Weary of trying to keep in touch with the body of Christ when we are all separated from one another. And it is exhausting. Yet, I have witnessed an indomitable spirit in the leadership of Central Baptist Church in Sarnia. You have demonstrated the power and strength of the Lord working through you as you are helping one another, figuring things out together, encouraging one another, and through it all you are forging unity. That is one of the pillars of an effective church. You have shown me that you have depended upon God who gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. With God's help, you are carrying on. You even do it with a sense of humor, which is refreshing. It is evidence of God working through you. We must never forget the promises of Scripture like this one. We know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose, Romans 8 and 28. In our passage from Isaiah 40, we see Scripture coming to life in our days. The failure of strength is not only possible among older people these days, but as the scripture says here, even youth grows tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, verse 30. <coughs> Frankly, I don't know how anybody today, young or old, can live a single day without depending upon the Lord for his strength and determination that we need in order to carry on. The emotional strain is having an effect upon youth these days, and this is a serious consideration. They are young ones who haven't lived long enough to build up a reserve of faith in God. We therefore must be there for them, setting an example of those who trust God for strength to carry on. We need to pray for our youth today, whose normal routines have been disrupted, and whose social lives, which are so important for development, have been taken from them. We need to reach out to them and pray for them. Even the most independent introverts in the world are feeling the strain of our situation with the lockdown and the pandemic. But scripture tells us that no matter how strong or independent we may feel that we are, we cannot do life alone without God. God often has to bring us to the place where we have to stop trying and turn to him and say, God, that's all I can do. Now it's up to you. Please help me. God is waiting for those words and that prayer from the most independent of souls. But that prayer often isn't said until a person has exhausted his or her own ideas with no results. The scripture says here that those who wait upon the Lord or hope in the Lord, depending upon which version of scripture you have, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 40 and 31. 
This presents a picture of waiting upon the Lord in prayer and putting our hope in Him. And as we do that, we rise up on wings like an eagle. Let's consider nature for a minute. Baby eaglets in the nest can do nothing but wait until the mother eagle returns to her nest to bring the necessary food, drink, or whatever else is needed to keep her babies alive. Those baby eaglets will cry and scream and flap around a lot and generally make a real scene while they are being cared for. Does that sound like some people you know? Maybe even some Christians too. When trials come, we cry and moan and scream and let everybody know just how bad things are. It is as if we are drowning in tears and dying in sorrow and God has abandoned us. But where is our faith with that kind of reaction? How can we say that we trust in our almighty God to meet every need and act as though we have no hope? But God says to us, be still and know that I and God. Be still. The reason so many Christians fail the fire and test of their faith is that they, that too many are bankrupt spiritually, so they have no faith all stored up in their spiritual bank account from which to draw strength in times of need. And yet, when we have invested the time saving up for the rainy days of trials to come, when we have spent time hiding the word of God in our hearts and have spent time praying regularly, we're ready for whatever comes in the future. The eagles, when preparing the location for their nest, will choose a spot high in a treetop or on a rocky ledge. They build it with thorns and broken branches and sharp rocks and a number of other items that seem entirely unsuitable for the project. But then they line it with a thick padding of wool and feathers and fur from animals they have killed, making it soft and comfortable for the, for the eggs. By the time the growing birds reach flying age, the comfort of the nest and the luxury of three month meals makes them quite reluctant to leave. But wait, the story is over. That's when the eagles, the parent eagles, begin stirring up the nest. With their strong talons, they begin pulling up the thick carpet of fur and feathers, bringing the sharp rocks and branches to the surface. As more of the bedding gets plucked up, the nest becomes very uncomfortable for the young eagles. Eventually, this convinces the young eagles to leave their once comfortable abode. They have to get out and fly. Just as the parent eagles stir the nest to force the eaglets to grow up, Jesus has to stir us up too making things uncomfortable sometimes so that we cannot stay the way we are. We are forced to leave the comfort of past glories and comfortable routines and past victories in order to become the church. And the we trust him enough to fly into unknown territory. Maybe God is stirring your nest to launch you into a new venture. And you just need to spread your wings and fly as you put your trust in the Lord. The wings of an eagle are designed for lift. They fly into the wind, not with the wind at their back. They take advantage of the wind and let it create the lift they need to rise higher and higher into the air. Doesn't God know all about the thermodynamics? <laughs> Once airborne, they're able to soar on the currents of air, and a little flapping of the wings is needed. Their head movements give them direction as well. If they look up, the rest of the body follows. If they look down, they are able to dive very quickly to catch their unsuspecting prey. As we put our faith in God, we must look up. We must look up in prayer. We must face our difficulties in the strength of the Lord. We must fly into the wind, in other words. When we decide to do that, our lives and our circumstances will be shaped by the purpose of the Lord. Those who trust in God will renew their strength. The Bible says, we will soar on wings like eagles. We will run our race well and not go weary to the point of quitting. We will walk with the Lord a walk that is purposeful, 
We will not faint away. We will not allow the difficulties of this present time to cause us to grow faint. I hope this has been helpful for all of you today who have been listening. As it says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. God bless you all. Amen.